I knew that thing was going to come down sooner or later. Oh, that's that's bad news right there. She's in her basement. It's gonna take all them houses. Oh, I hope she's in her basement. Get away from the windows! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Where's everybody? Where's it? Where's everybody? What you? It's gonna get that house right there. Yes, it is. Shit. There it is. There went the hot barn. Look at that. Oh my God! Look! Right there, look oh, you're that. kidding! Look at this. Picking it up now. Where's the other one, John? I don't know. Go, go, go. Shoot it. Better floor it. Better floor it. Shoot it. We're all right. Just stay ahead of it. Get in the le left lane, Greg. Yeah. Oh, that didn't help us. Go back. You're okay. You're okay. Keep going, man. Keep going. Faster? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots faster. Lots faster. Underneath the dirt. Keep rolling, Ted. It's coming out of here. Keep rolling. Shove yourselves right up underneath oh, them and hang on to them. Oh, oh, they're 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 This is spectacular. This is spectacular. We have to breathe thousands of feet in the air. There are flash fires on all the uh, high tension wires. We're about three quarters of a mile from the actual touchdown at this time. This is really spectacular. And another touchdown, another touchdown. 
I'm going to have to leave this area here. The debris is drifting my way. There was a time when videos as spectacular and personal as these were undreamed of. During the early decades of serious tornado research, there were few motion pictures from which to try to gather clues about this most puzzling and violent creature of the atmosphere. I gotta keep watching the southwest side. That's where most of them come from. You think it's likely? No. The odds are way against it, even in weather like this. I've never seen one, but there's always a chance. Weather Bureau wouldn't issue a tornado alert without some good reason. <laughs> When the first tornado preparedness film was made in 1956, only three tornadoes had been filmed. The very first film was taken at Corn, Oklahoma in 1951. These were actually a pair of tornadoes, possibly rotating in opposite directions. Eyewitnesses stated that the funnels merged at the edge of town and went on to destroy about 25 homes. Other films were taken at Scotts Bluff, Nebraska in 1955, where a family of 13 tornadoes kept forecasters and spotters very busy. In 1953, this remarkable piece of film was taken at Warner Robins, Georgia, where 19 people were killed. In some ways, it's unmatched even today in its depiction of buildings being blown apart. Tornadoes in 1953 were among the deadliest in history. Houses and streets and people. The modern era of research on the life cycle of tornadoes probably began in 1957. This tornado at Dallas provided hundreds of photographs and over 2,000 feet of movie film, covering the full life history of the tornado. It became the subject of the first television documentary featuring the actual tornado. On and on the twister moves. Through the Trinity River bottom. North along Riverside Drive. South of Brook Hollow Country Club. Across Harry Hines Boulevard. Over Bachman Lake. Point, the black snout filled itself with a tremendous gulp of water, and with its thirst quenched, it gradually disintegrated with one final blast at some homes along Northwest Highway. <laughs> Disaster Dallas. A few months later, Detailed studies of a tornado at Fargo, North Dakota, were begun by Professor Fujita of the University of Chicago. Ten people were killed here, the same total as at Dallas. The massive funnel damaged or destroyed over 1,000 homes, 
twice as many as the smaller Dallas funnel. Take a look now at these clouds as they are forming in the distance. This is looking toward the west north of the Channel 6 studios. You can see a great deal of turbulence in these clouds. They're dipping, falling, rising once again. There's also at the bottom of the screen or just above the ground quite a lot of smoke, Paul. I don't know what that's from. All in all, it looks now as though we might just have uh, rather severe conditions on our hands now. As we have it wasn't until 1964 that a tornado was captured live on television after a hook echo was sighted on the television station's radar screen at Wichita Falls, Texas. The funnel appears to be moving away from Wichita Falls proper, but is now, at the moment, apparently, very close to Shepard Air Force Base. We have quite a lot of confusion out in this area, not only at the station, with people wondering what's going to happen, but a good many cars stopped along the Seymour Highway. Yes. Can, you, can you swing around and get that, please? Uh, a white rope effect. Uh, very definitely, that funnel is still with us, which is uh, right above, possibly just beyond, Shepard Air Force Base. That is still a funnel jack and a big one. The funnel eventually ripped apart about 500 homes and killed seven people. Between 1957 and 1971, there were hundreds of destructive tornadoes. But only a few were captured on motion picture film each year. Very few were in color. This film of a tornado at Perrin Air Force Base in Texas has been used in dozens of educational films. It covers almost the full life history of the storm, including the first rotating clouds. Through the mature stage, to the final rope stage. The location and date of some films were not accurately recorded for posterity. This was probably the Dallas tornado of 1957. In 1966, not far from Mount Rushmore, South Dakota, time-lapse photography of a 10-mile-high thunderstorm accidentally captured the formation of a tornado on just a few seconds of film. Hundreds of trees were snapped and five campers were injured in a pickup truck. Also in 1966, this funnel at Topeka, Kansas, set a new record for damage. It was history's first hundred million dollar tornado. It also ended the myth that Burnett's Mound, at the southwest edge of the city, offered some mystical tornado protection. This is Topeka, Kansas, and this is the aftermath of the most destructive tornado ever to strike the state capitol. It sliced a path of death and damage a half mile wide and 15 miles long. 17 were killed, 3,500 people were homeless, 500 homes and 50 businesses destroyed. Damage estimated at $100 million. Automobiles were tossed about like toys by the tremendous force of the twister. An old Indian legend, which says Topeka is safe from tornadoes because it's situated in the Kansas River Valley, was also destroyed by the vicious wind. After the storm, the city looked like the result of a massive bombing. Schools were pressed into use as shelters for the homeless. Casualties would have been higher had not civil defense sirens screamed a warning 15 minutes before the tornado hit. Many people fled to their basements. The area 
hardest hit was the campus of Washburn University, where every single building was damaged or destroyed. Damage here alone was estimated at many millions of dollars. Every tree on the university grounds was down. Roofs and top floors of buildings literally disappeared. The new student union building, law school, math building, gymnasium, and chapel were among those leveled. Four sorority houses lost roofs and walls. Fortunately, Washburn's 5,000 students had been dismissed for the summer just a few days before the tornado hit. School papers and books were found as far as 65 miles away. Masses of rubble, aftermath of a killer storm. The era of black and white tornado films ended in 1969, as this tornado passed from Perkins to Ripley, Oklahoma. The towns were spared, but a dozen farms were torn apart. It was also in the mid-1960s that scientists began to seriously explore, indirectly, the interior structure of tornadoes. In a process known as vortex breakdown, air, which usually moves upward inside a funnel, is pulled downward. Vortex breakdown can lead to multiple vortex development. After vortex breakdown, the outer wall of the tornado becomes thinner. In that thin outer wall, a certain critical value may be reached. When the ratio between the rising or vertical wind speed and the speed of rotation reaches a critical value, multiple vortices are a natural product. The Neil Ward model was perfected at Purdue University in the 1970s. It can produce multiple vortex tornadoes in several forms. With two, three, four, five, and even six multiple suction vortices, allowing for very detailed airflow studies. Here, Smoke is entering from the top of the model, revealing the downward movement of air in the center of the multiple vortex. This would not be clearly photographed in an actual tornado for many years. But Professor Fujita found confirmation of the idea in the study of some large dust devils this dust devil in Arizona and this one in New Mexico have an obvious multiple vortex structure. Multiple vortices were recognized in 1973 here at Lindsborg, Kansas and a few minutes later at Salina. But it wasn't until the so-called super outbreak of 1974 that they were clearly photographed for detailed study. First in Indiana, then in Ohio, at Xenia, over 2,000 homes were damaged or destroyed and 34 people were killed. Within this whirling complex, Professor Fujita found what might have been twin suction vortices. During the next two decades, as motion pictures and videos became more numerous, it was obvious that multiple vortex tornadoes were not rare at all. To the contrary, they have proved to be quite common. Still photography 
was just not able to capture the more short-lived, subtle, and easily obscured features of the multiple vortices. The various forms taken by these multiple vortices are fascinating to watch. Here are some classic examples. Oh my goodness, look at that. What is that? That's a cloud. That's a funnel cloud. No one is going to watch? Whoa. Uh, no, you better stay here for a while, Jada. Your mom knows you're here. Oh my goodness. I think that's a funnel cloud. trees that it hit the last time. It's going to go to our south. Heston tornado may have had multiple vortices for much of its life, but they were masked by dust and debris for all but a few seconds. Both large and small-scale vortices, created by forest fires, have been under study for decades by the U.S. Forest Service. During intense burning, most of the fire or even the entire fire, can begin to rotate, becoming one gigantic whirl, concentrated around a vortex at the core. This happened during a later stage of the Garibaldi fire, which you just saw. Cumulus clouds formed above the smoke column on that fire and produced rain. The rain was heavy enough to put out spot fires that had started downwind of the burn area. Here is another central core vortex that formed during a wildfire near a populated section of California. Before it was over, the vortex injured four people and destroyed two houses, a barn, and three cars. The last of the vertical vortices doesn't have a proper name. We'll call it the Tornado Twin because it is probably similar to a tornado, both in structure and in the way it forms. 
It occurs when convection, or a rising current of air, is very strong. This kind of fire whirl appears to originate high in the convection column on the downwind side and burrows downward until it reaches the ground. It appears to form at the ground because, like a tornado, it may be invisible until it reaches the ground. The vortex then rapidly fills with debris or flame, depending on whether it touches down outside or inside the fire. Remember that all these vertical vortices are most likely to occur on a sunny afternoon with low winds, an unstable atmosphere, and intense burning. As already demonstrated, dust devils have provided insight into multiple vortex structures. They've also been studied for what they reveal about atmospheric conditions over a desert. Dust devils form under clear skies with light winds and are never recorded as a tornado. When the ground surface becomes extremely hot, a thin layer of air becomes very unstable. Rising plumes of heat may be induced to rotate, either clockwise or counterclockwise and usually under 30 miles per hour. A few dust devils may rotate at 60 miles per hour or even faster. The circulation can grow to an altitude of 2,000 feet or more. Some of the means by which the circulation was made visible in these Arizona experiments did not involve very advanced technology. The life cycle of tornadoes was better understood after water spouts were studied in a project off the Florida Keys. These were true water spouts, not just tornadoes over water. True water spouts don't need a powerful thunderstorm as a generator. True water spouts are spawned from towering cumulus clouds, often with rain showers, along wind shear zones, over warm water. Smoke flares were used to reveal the complex airflow around the water spouts. The flares show that airflow was not always directly into the vortex. The flow seemed to be strongly influenced by the cool outflow from nearby showers. That cool outflow may have had a role in creating the water spouts. instruments were swung through the vortex columns. Some water spouts were directly penetrated by aircraft. And others were studied in time lapse. Florida studies identified five stages in the life cycle of water spouts. The dark spot stage, the spiral pattern stage, The spray ring stage, which is very short-lived. The mature
mature stage. And the dissipating stage. In perhaps the most difficult of all experiments, an attempt was made to directly measure the physical properties of a tornado. This required firing an instrumented rocket directly into a funnel. The complex instrumentation needed to be miniaturized so that the rocket could meet the rigid materials and propellant restrictions set by the military and by the FAA. Yet it had to contain enough propellant to assure penetration of the tornado. The experiment was designed to gather data on the possibility that the strongest tornadoes are driven, at least in part, by heat from lightning discharges. Some renowned physicists believe strongly that there is a significant lightning-driven component to the energy source for tornadoes. That's good. And we supposedly have everything booted. <laughs> We are going to try and get uh, a rocket in it. We're going slowly towards it, but we can see that it's somewhat unstable. And we're going to get as close as we can safely. Everything is checked. is booted again. It is fantastic. We've already used up half the film here. We're still approaching it and uh, I don't care if that movie goes all the way to the end. It's too fantastic a sight to uh, miss some rain there which is screwing up the photography. There's no sign of any turbulence. We still have a little bit of the film left to go and we are within firing range. Although it's getting thinner and fire. We miss. rope at this stage, but we're going to fire. One, two, three, fire. And uh, we're going to try and get in just a little closer this time. See whether we can. All right. Three, two, one. Fire. There, perk. Ah. Nope. Some experiments were associated with regulation and safety in the nuclear power industry. One that did not directly involve vortex photography was an effort to understand the penetrating ability of tornado generated missiles. Rocket sleds were used to propel objects, such as steel rods and telephone poles, at various thicknesses of steel-reinforced concrete. The speeds were typical of, or even exceeding, the speeds expected for heavy debris inside a tornado. The 
magnitude of the tornado wind speed has been under speculation for decades, even centuries. Since 1957, there have been many attempts to measure the motion of debris and clouds in order to accurately measure that wind speed. This process is called photogrammetry. One first traces the movement of a parcel of dust, a cloud tag, or a piece of debris. Then, distances are recorded and the time between movie frames, usually a 24th of a second, is used to calculate the velocity. A wind speed of 126 miles per hour was measured from movements in the Kona, Hawaii water spout. Two miles per hour was measured at Cabot, Arkansas. 144 was the top value in Florida water spouts. One fifty five was measured at Salina, Kansas. One hundred and fifty nine was measured as this tornado devastated thirty farms and then ripped apart four hundred homes in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. One hundred and sixty eight was measured in the anticyclonic member of the Jordan, Iowa tornado family. One hundred and seventy was calculated at Dallas, Texas. A speed of one seventy six was recorded in the mature stage at Union City, Oklahoma. One ninety was measured at Ash Valley, Kansas, at a point about three hundred feet above the ground. The wind speed was 114 miles per hour nearer to ground level. Two hundred and two was recorded at Sedoris, Illinois. As in all of these examples of maximum winds, the measured wind speed was lower near ground level. It also might have been higher in a hidden part of the tornado or in other stages of its life cycle that weren't filmed. The Seymour, Texas tornado damaged only trees and telephone poles on its 11-mile path. But photogrammetry measured winds at over 200 miles per hour. 265 miles per hour was calculated within the complex multiple vortex structure at Xenia, Ohio. The highest recorded wind speed using motion picture techniques was 284 miles per hour, about 1,000 feet above the ground, in a suction vortex at Parker, Indiana. Beginning in 1971, the spread of Super 8 home movie cameras began to provide an increasing number of tornado motion pictures. By 1972, 
the art and science of tornado chasing had improved dramatically. We were getting better and better at predicting which thunderstorms would likely spawn a tornado. And chase teams were now formally organized. When the Union City tornado touched down in 1973, it was almost surrounded by high quality photographic equipment. In addition, it was within range of the experimental Doppler radar at the National Severe Storms Laboratory. For the first time, a full set of Doppler radar data was gathered, all coordinated with detailed field observations. It was the closest thing yet to having a real tornado inside a laboratory. Radar probed the mesocyclone structure and found radar signatures of the early stages of tornado formation, none of which are visible with conventional radar. Like the tornadoes at Dallas and Fargo in 1957, Union City was truly a landmark event. Later in 1973, a tornado was photographed in time-lapse as it spun, as so many tornadoes do, out of the southwest edge of a supercell. Three people were killed when the tornado picked up a 19-foot boat and threw it back into the water. In 1975, at Tulsa, Oklahoma, spring-like weather conditions developed in December. 150 homes were damaged or destroyed and 38 people were injured. These grainy photographs are typical of so much of the 8mm film shot in the 1970s. Perhaps only one in a hundred tornadoes is anticyclonic. In other words, it rotates clockwise in the northern hemisphere. In 1975, a large and well-formed anticyclonic tornado occurred near Freedom, Oklahoma, the first of its kind to be so clearly photographed. In 1976, the town of Jordan, Iowa, was nearly obliterated by a monstrous tornado. As it moved along an unusual V-shaped path, it was accompanied by another large anticyclonic tornado, the second to be filmed in about a year. The Freedom and Jordan anticyclonic tornadoes remain as the two best examples ever photographed. Here at Lamont, Illinois, two people died and 170 homes were destroyed. The Lamont and Jordan tornadoes, although 250 miles apart, both occurred on the same day. Both took unusual turns and both were accompanied by anticyclonic tornadoes. They were among the many storms whose damage was investigated firsthand by the acknowledged master of aerial and ground observations, Professor Fujita. By the end of the decade, films of tornadoes were no longer rare, and research projects requiring a closer approach to tornadoes were becoming bolder and more complex. In one project, the goal was to drop a sound recording package in the path of a tornado. The team was fortunate that the funnel was rather small, weak, 
in its formative stage of development. This would be where we drive right into the tornado, so be very, very careful. CG. Rapid circulation, right overhead. Slow down, Neil. Stop. Rapid circulation. About one half. Debris! Yes, debris! Right tornado passing right in front of us. Oh my god. The sound package. Sound package. Sound package. Get it out. special day in 1981, chase teams watched the spectacular finale of the Cordell, Oklahoma tornado, among the most graceful ever recorded. to launch an instrumented rocket directly into a tornado funnel misfired. This tornado grew large enough and was close enough to the National Severe Storms Laboratory to generate an excellent Doppler radar data set. It also reached a new maximum wind speed record for Doppler radar, 217 miles per hour. TOTO, the Totable Tornado Observatory, it was successfully positioned once under an actual tornado. 
that one tornado was weak, but there were some hectic moments during that successful deployment in 1985. You all right? Yeah. For God's sakes, hang on. I'm okay. Watch the lightning. Watch the lightning, folks. Damn, we got a hot dog here. Okay, deploy, deploy, deploy. Let's go. Oh, I got the thing. Deploy. Okay, get this thing up here. You got this? Grab the hook. Yes, it's off, it's off. Let's go. Let's go. Be careful now. Come on, come on. Got it on the ramp. Everybody on the ramp? It's on the ramp? It's on. It's all right. Watch the face. Yeah! This is gonna face to the north. Face to the north. Turn it on. Okay. No, 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 Mike! North! Look at north! Look at north! Let's get the f out of here. Go! It's right! Go! Let's go! go. Yeah! Go! I think we need to go back, videotape it, then we gotta go back and pick up Toto. Wait a second, though. I think we gotta go north. Let's move it. Go. Yeah. Enough Toto. Enough Toto. Yeah, let's move it. Come on. Okay, this is missing. Folks, it's behind us now. We're safe. We're safe. Large, good circulation right now. Good tornadic circulation. We got taking another picture. Picture number four. Watch right here. Watch right now. Watch right here. There we go. We're getting a, a large, large tornado beginning to develop. Picture number six of the large tornado developing. Getting close, boys and girls. Uh, Steve, let's go across the bridge. Go across the bridge. Oh, this tornado on the ground, and it's not a funnel. It's got to be a tornado. Uh, beautiful. Drive plot wrapping around, taking another picture. Large funnel or possible tornado down directly south, moving across us slightly north northwest. Watch your safety factor here. Yee got it, got it, got it. Funnel dropping. Picture number 34. Oh, no, no, no. Picture number 34 for all this thing. A needle funnel for me. Oh, it's the funnel. Good funnel. Good corner. Uh, possible tornado beginning again. Accelerating very quickly, rotating around the edge of the mesocyclone is the funnel. Pretty soon beginning here. I don't want to draw any more on this. Okay. Too okay. dark, too dangerous. Let's just go back and get total. The year 1981 may also mark the last widespread use of motion picture cameras for another transition was underway. A shift from motion picture film to videotape. This small tornado at Piedmont, Oklahoma, under a spectacular supercell column, may have been the first ever captured on videotape. The Cheyenne, Wyoming tornado in 1979 was the first video to receive national attention as it ripped apart about 500 homes. By the spring of 1985, the home video camcorder had become widespread enough so the tornadoes were not only filmed with regularity by chase teams, 
but also by people in their backyards. That's a tornado, yeah, Lee. Yeah, but look at it, picking it up. Look yeah. at Dale. Here comes a tornado. Sure is. Holy. That's a tornado. Look at it. Get downstairs. In 1986, an unusual tornado was taped from a television news helicopter over Minneapolis. That video provided a unique opportunity to compare a tornado in nature with a tornado in a laboratory. Downward moving air can be seen in the so-called breakdown bubble area of the tornado at Minneapolis. Vortex breakdown occurs when air, which usually moves upward in the center of a vortex, is pulled downward. Surrounding the vortex breakdown, there may be a helical vortex in which air is moving upward. Soon after vortex breakdown, the downward moving air was surrounded by a helical vortex. These features are rarely seen in nature because most tornadoes usually have either too much dust, too little moisture, or too much moisture. Vortex breakdown did not reach the ground. In the relatively short portion of the tornado, between the breakdown area and the ground, there developed a narrow, intense vortex. This portion obviously had very high inflow and vertical wind speeds. It might be thought of as a single suction vortex. Minnesota conditions were probably as perfect as we will ever see. In 1988, Hurricane Gilbert provided a good look at an unusual hurricane spawn tornado, 250 miles from the ocean and the first to be captured on film since this tornado spun out of Hurricane Agnes in 1972. Despite the massive appearance of the Hurricane Gilbert tornado, it did not produce a wide and intense damage track. Few hurricane spawned tornadoes do. Move, we'll move. In 1989, this very photogenic tornado touched down at Hodges, Texas. Nearby, a new era of meteorological research was opening. 
the tornado was being probed by a portable Doppler radar. By 1991, the Doppler was being used regularly and successfully. On April 12th, Professor Bluestein from the University of Oklahoma was hot on the trail of a mesocyclone near Enid. They just issued a tornado warning for right where we are. Should we set up, Herb? Yep. No. No. Yeah, right over yeah, here there is. The right over here, the circulation, right over strong. here. In fact, it's rotating right in through here. Uh, we're actually a little bit close. Look at the rotation, right in here. See, it's centered right in there. Take out the radar right now. Let's give it a try. Okay. It only takes two minutes to get it out. Who cares? Yeah, really. <laughs> Okay, it's a very, very nice, uh, very nice wall cloud, and the whole thing is rotating. And it could happen anywhere within here. Let's just... Use the foresight now and stay in the funnel. Whoa, 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 watch it. Okay, you're getting decent levels on the, on the recorder. I hate this foresight, by the way. Duly noted. I'm getting signals from the left. We're going to get the side loads of the truck. Keep that tight circulation in there, NCW. I'm on the left side of that tight circulation. And I'm going to go over. I want to cut over to the right side of the circulation. We have trucks. Damn it. Who is that? We're getting side loads. Oh, yeah. Tripod. Tripod. Are you getting any signal on it? I got signal. You do? On the funnel? Yeah. Any high pitches? There was a fairly high pitch just for a second. I hit the button. have rapid rotation in the wall cloud, and the funnel cloud is just to our north-northwest. We're packing up the radar, and we're going to move north. The right. foresight is still on it, if that makes any difference about placement. Well, that's all right. Oh! There we go. Now it's off. Hang on a second. Got it? He's flagging us down. Maybe. He's trying to get up there, brother. Yeah, this is a good picture here. Well, you can look at the tape. Just don't get us killed. We're turning. We're turning east on four. That's where we're headed, right? Toward it. It's just on up and down, isn't it? Yeah. Stop at this station here. We're going to stop right here. Okay. Good. Touch him down again.
Which mode are you in? I'm in CW. Okay, tornado is crossing the path of the radar. Debris in the air. Can't find the bore site, Jim. Okay, forget it. It doesn't matter. I'm aiming right at me. Jeff, do you have the signal? Oh, what a classic. Should I go to uh, FM? Look at the signal here. Is that any good? Yeah, that's spectacular. Keep on it. Awesome. Center right on the funnel. I'm using this uh, this thing right here. Yeah. Center right on the funnel. 502. Okay. All right. Now go a little bit to the left of the funnel. Fine. Hold it there. Okay. Go back to the center of the funnel. That was incredible. Well, you got a smile on your face. You got what you wanted, Doctor? Exactly. Yeah, I hope it worked. It may not be a time to ask you, but how is this compared with other ones that you've seen in recent uh, right. recent times? Uh, good. I'll give it a I'll give it an eight. An eight? An eight, eight point five. It was very close and very intense. Just two weeks later, history was made with Doppler radar on a chase near Red Rock, Oklahoma. A tornado that started out as a rather modest and picturesque funnel grew in a few minutes to a monster tornado. saucer panning back I've got to get this updraft just once in my life oh all the way up all the way around looking east looking southeast looking due south on interstate 35 wedge tornado gonna cross the interstate giant wedge oh that is look at the rotation that has got to be a violent tornado major league tornado okay be careful here we're gonna pass the damage path in a second yeah that is incredible motion. The wind speed was measured at 287 miles per hour, the highest ever recorded by any remote sensing device. Side. 
By 1991, highly visible tornadoes in populated areas were likely to be taped in as many as a dozen camcorders. This was the case with the Andover, Kansas event. Caught first by storm chaser Tim Marshall near Clearwater, the tornado finally lifted after 45 continuous miles on the ground. All right, up here and stop then. Pull over to the side of the road and stop. Oh, hit another house. Hit another house. This is in Hayesville, Kansas. It's 6, 4, 5, 6 16.
is what the Golden Spur trailer park looked like intact, less than 10 minutes before the killer tornado swept through Andover. Sergeant Paul C. of the Andover Police Department weaves up and down the streets, warning residents to take shelter. Some of them were running to the shelter, some of them were uh, running to their cars, and there was one guy that was walking along with his dog. <laughs> Paul normally uses his camcorder to document traffic stops. He never imagined using it to record the final moments of terror as the tornado devastated the town he has sworn to protect and serve. After warning as many people as he could in the time left, it was time for Paul to try and save himself. Don't get this way. It's been on the ground for probably 10 minutes now. It looks like it's going to get up. Okay, all you just take cover. Don't stay out any longer. Go for cover. the tornado was about to blow me away. I, I, I stayed as long as I could. I could see it coming from the northeast, or headed northeast towards me, rather. And when I was, when I couldn't go again, when I couldn't make another pass with, without being afraid I was going to get blown away, then I headed for shelter myself. Well, I'm at 173rd and Pawnee, and I can still see it. It's uh, at me, still on the ground in the echo right now. Is anyone just hit my 40 Anyone at your 40? Carolyn, hand over up. It's going to hand over right now. Just hit the chief's house. Regan, come on! It's still a little ways away. It's not that far! Carly, come on, let's go! You ready? Get steel here, Tom! center of this mobile home park is this underground bunker with steel reinforced concrete. Some 200 to 300 people, it's almost unbelievable, were jammed down inside here. They survived the tornado. When they came out, of course, there wasn't much left. The next member of this tornado family then touched down on a lake about three miles east of where the Andover tornado finally lifted. That relatively weak tornado became one of the most famous in history. We were not expecting it, nor looking for it. A tornado that suddenly appeared almost out of nowhere as we traveled south along the Kansas Turnpike, north of El Dorado. Let's go, Craig, let's go. Let's the wind, let's go, let's go, let's go. We thought there would be plenty of time to videotape it, but within seconds, it was looming larger headed right for us. Jumping back into our car, we tried to get away from it. Go, go, shoot it. You better floor it, you better floor it. Shoot it. We're all right, just stay ahead of it. Attempting to outrun it to the only structure within miles, a highway overpass. Keep going, man, keep going. Faster? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lots faster, lots faster. Watch faster, Greg's catching us. You gotta go, buddy. The twister, though, was gaining on us, and we made it there just moments before it struck. Get up under the girders. Is that where we wanna go? Yes. Underneath the girders. Keep rolling, Ted. It's coming at us. Okay. Okay, 
Hey, talk to me. What it sounded like a freight train. It just passed right on top of us. People very upset. People underneath the girders of this overpass. They're still hanging on, hanging on for their lives. It was a tremendous rush. Flying debris everywhere. Some people look to me like they, they're all right, but they have some scratches and bruises. Here comes another one. Hang on, Ted. I got you. Hang on. You're all right. Put your hand over my mouth. You guys just about didn't make it. Well, where was he at? Was he in the car or what? Yeah, he ran into the van. Yes. Okay, Alex. He's got a good heartbeat, but he's not awake. He's good as he had. He's got a concussion. He's playing right outside the car. He's on the van. He's broken. Those who did not make it to the overpass were less fortunate. All along the turnpike, there were injuries and wreckage. Your left hand and your head, okay? You remember everything that happened? Not really? This man was thrown from his car after it was picked up by the twister and tossed across the highway into a ditch. 30 yards away, a tractor trailer rig picked up like a toy and thrown across the highway. The trucker who was trapped inside remarkably survived. You can't describe it. And completely from the far shoulder rolled all the way over. How do you feel now? Five or six times. How do you feel now? Uh, I like to be alone for a few minutes. <laughs> got some flanking to do. Occasionally, a video is taken that provides new insight into a problem that has been puzzling for decades. One such video was taken in 1990. To understand the significance, a few minutes of explanation are needed. It is not uncommon for two members of the same tornado family to be seen at the same time. Normally, one tornado forms and gains strength as the older member of the family weakens and dissipates. The older member is seen here in the distance and the younger member in the foreground. They are often separated by several miles. The result usually means a break in the damage path. Tornadoes rarely last more than 45 minutes, and so damage paths are rarely more than 45 miles long. One of the most long-standing puzzles in tornado climatology involves the damage path of the great tri-state tornado of 1925. The damage went on and on without a break for over 200 miles. Our current understanding of thunderstorms leads us to believe that such a long, continuous path is not possible. A clue to how it might have happened was filmed for the first time near Heston, Kansas in 1990. At about the same time as the tornado on the left was passing through Heston, the tornado on the right was forming a few miles to the north. As the new tornado grew stronger, the Heston tornado, seen on the left, grew weaker. One would expect a tornado family to have a break in the damage track of several miles. However, the two separate tornadoes grew closer. As the Heston tornado began to rope out, it was absorbed into the circulation of the new tornado. This resulted in two separate tornadoes, but with a continuous tornadic damage path. Could the tri-state have been such a family? We will never know, but at least we now have a possible explanation. 
Just two years later, storm chaser Gene Roden filmed the process again. Just from blowing it out, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's still vorticity really wrapped up. Oh, wow. But it's still on the ground. It's, it's a needle, but it's still on the ground. Get this guy to, to go the other way so I don't get hit. Thanks. These new videos are a great help in spotter training where they provide exposure to unusual or difficult to spot situations. Typical of this is a Louisiana tornado, filmed from the east bank of the Mississippi River and illuminated only by lightning. Although most videos add little to our understanding of tornadoes, each year one or two will provide either insight or trigger some good discussion. Many will provide spectacle. A few clips will become classics. And if we all act responsibly, no one will lose their life, either storm chasing or being the last one to shut off the camcorder and head for the basement. Well, look at the trees by the highway. Right, look, look at there. there. Look at the highway trees. Oh, oh. The power line just went out. Power line, line just went out. Look at them. Oh, power lines. Oh, I'm getting oh, every oh, power line that's out. This is cool. Oh, <laughs> oh your okay. boats. Is that a power it's line? very rough. Shit's gonna. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, here it comes. Oh, here it comes. Oh, it's right out oh, here. Get out of here. I'm ten feet from it, and all the electricity, all the power lines are going. I'm ten feet from it. I'm 10 feet from it. It is incredible. It's coming across the lake right now. Come here about it. Stay right here. Oh, it's oh. coming right at the house. Look at that. Yeah. It's Sweet. coming right at the house here. We're going to have to go in in a minute. It's either that or do or die. July 6th or whatever it is. Unbelievable. I think you can come right here. You saw all the power lines. Going out, here it is. Okay. Watch out. Here it is, it's going right out across. You can right see the across. stuff flying. Don't stand by the windows. Where's John? Right there. Just totally incredible. It's right outside. Oh, there goes by the boat. <laughs> well, I hope not. Whoa, look at that. Hey, watch the windows. Oh. Get away from the windows. The tree just blew over. Oh, look at the tree over. Just look at the top. are totally blown out. The, the trees. The docks are broken. The docks are broken. Oh, there goes our boat. Our boat's upside down. Our boat's gone. Our boat's upside down. Our boat's upside down. Yeah. Where's our dog? A dog. Where's our leader dog? Okay, that was it. It's devastating. It's devastating. It's just totally shot. Our boat. We're about 10 miles north of Wabasso. Very large tornado on the ground. Strong and 